All right. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it, church? I tell you what, we've uh, we've been through a time throughout the past year, but the Lord is uh, opening the doors and the light is shining in, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Well, um, as I was saying, I want to welcome everybody here today. Of course, this is the 35th anniversary celebration of Omega Baptist Church. 35 years in ministry. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And uh, and it's been a long uh, period of time, but my goodness, the seeds that have been planted in the community, I, I don't think... I don't think we'll all know until we get to heaven what all has been done here. We really won't. Really won't. You can see right there is the original picture of the church. So this is going to be the future home of the church. Some of y'all are old enough to remember what that looked like, you know. Um, but at that moment when that sign was planted, actually before that, there was an ancient landmark that was set. An ancient landmark. Proverbs 22, 28 tells us, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. And there's two ways of looking at that one particular verse. The, the first idea is back in the ancient times, they'd set a landmark in their property, and sometimes you'd have an old uh, scheming neighbor who'd come over, and he'd move the landmark in the middle of the night so he'd get a little more property. Now that's the physical and the practical application of that verse, but the spiritual application is this, that we set landmarks in our lives, in our spiritual lives. We set landmarks in what we do, in our actions, and how we are. And the ancient landmarks that we set is the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. The fundamental doctrines of Christ passed down. And that's what's been going on here for 35 years. Where our local uh, church here landmark begins is with a group of charter members who felt led to go out from their home church at Pleasant Ridge Baptist Church and begin a new Baptist church in our area. It was named by Brother C.H. Christopher, who's no longer with us, as Omega Baptist Church. In case you don't know it, that's the name of Jesus. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, right? What they began has gone on to faithful congregations over the years as the church here has, has grown. Uh, faithful pastors uh, who would serve as under-shepherds here. Uh, Brother uh, C.H. Christopher, as I mentioned, Dr. C.H. Christopher, uh, in term, Reverend Chester Cochran, uh, Reverend Everett Rice was our second pastor here at Omega, Reverend Robert Hopkins, our third pastor here, uh, and an in term of Reverend Dale Gray at one time, uh, of course, Reverend Bernie Bud Cagle, uh, in term, uh, Reverend Maurice Quillen, and we have his, uh, his, his, his wife here with us today. And uh, Reverend Russell Rhodes was the fifth pastor, and I'm honored to serve as the sixth pastor of Omega Baptist Church. As you know, uh, it takes more than just the pastor. Pastors sometimes come and go throughout the years, but there's those faithful deacons who have served as well. Uh, just in, in the time I've been here, uh, Brother Charles and, of course, Brother Bill Sarton, who's no longer with us, and uh, Brother Ken and Brother Danny have served as faithful deacons here at the church, and we appreciate what they've done. Now, that assembly that gathered together so long ago, that congregation, they acquired a piece of land at 1120 Phillips Road, White Pine, Tennessee. And they began the process of building up the church, not only physically, but also spiritually. Uh, Brother Robert Hopkins here in the old church, and, uh, they had many different things going on. Some of y'all can remember when they had the one long pew back here in the fellowship hall, can't you? You can remember what it was like uh, during that time so long ago. And uh, right here we see in this picture Brother Bud breaking ground on where we are standing here today. Right here in this sanctuary where we're standing at right now. And, and Brother Bud tells me that there is a plan someday for a third edition. Praise God, I hope I get to see it. You want to see it too? Amen. 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 Well, it's going to come through the constant fulfillment of what we are called to do here at Omega in these end times, you might say, is to plant seeds, 
to go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We've touched many lives over the years. Some of them are still here with us, some of them are not. But we planted seeds here, church. I'm telling you, you're never going to know what all has been accomplished over these 35 years of planting seeds out here in this community, letting people know that Jesus loves them. Because let me tell you, in the hour in which we are living here today, a lot of people don't know Jesus loves them. A lot of people don't know that, that God sent His Son to die for our sins and to give us real life in Christ. A lot of people don't know that. But what's happened here for 35 years has planted a seed of love for this community that will be known in all eternity, right? You know, you think about over the years and what has kept us going. It's hope, isn't it? It's hope. The hope of a home in heaven, the hope of eternal life, the hope of the blessedness that the Lord Jesus Christ gives us. I remember coming here with my family many years ago and we were kind of in the place where we didn't think we had no hope. We kind of felt been called into ministry, different complications. But in the midst of all that, we came here and I was met by a loving and kind congregation that welcomed us here. And especially a, a, a pastor who didn't care a bit to get behind a young preacher and mentor him in the faith and show him love. And that is uh, the man who's about to speak before you here this morning, Reverend Bud Cagle. You want to talk about a man who's got hope. His, the hope of Jesus is in his heart. And he doesn't care a bit to share that with others. And uh, I tell you what, we love Bud, don't we? We love Bud Amen. and appreciate him and... Brother Bud, if you'll come up and, and uh, share with us the Word of God this morning. Thank you. I feel honored to be up here this morning. There's a hundred messages went through my mind. You know how it is. And uh, I think I've landed on one, which is the Word of God, okay? <laughs> From St. John chapter 13. Verses 34 and 35, when Jesus said, would you stand with me for the reading of the word? He said, the new commandment I give you, given to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know, all men know, that you are my disciples if you have love to one another. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we praise you. We thank you, God. We thank you so much for the love that you have given to us in our hearts. And Father, sometimes I can't wait till I get home. Because Heavenly Father, just to bask in thy love because you are love, God. And Father, the one thing that you've given to me, if you've given anything, is that love. To love others, no matter who they are, what they've done. No matter what color of the skin, Father, we're created in your image. And Father, we're to love. And thank you so much, Lord. And Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, that I get out of the way, that you just take over, just give me the words, guide me the words of my mouth this morning. And Lord, if there's a soul here that will be convicted... And they give their life either here today or maybe tomorrow or down the road, baby, but something that you've given me to say. Praise be unto thy holy name, God. Thy will be done. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. I have been shown so much love. And I'll say a little bit about Faye. And I've, I've been shown so much love from this congregation. in helping Faye and myself. And that's why I love this congregation so much. Not only by coming and visiting the pastor and his wife and family to come and visit with us. They even came down one Sunday afternoon we had church in the front yard. You need to try that sometime. Now it brings the neighbors in, don't it, Scott? The neighbors grab their chairs and come down and see what's going on and sits. And we have a wonderful time. I can't remember what Scott broke, uh, spoke a lot on, but I can tell you I remember this one thing. I believe we fellowshiped for over an hour in the front yard. Had a wonderful time in the Lord. 
You need to try that sometimes. Just do a front yard worship service in the neighborhood. And it's a wonderful thing that you do. But they so much love. And I think about the church here, how they have brought food to us. And come and visit with us. Getting into the message this morning, you sang one of your songs here about how we need God in America. A long time ago, there was a pastor, and I'm glad I brought this notes with me. He was a founder of the Salvation Army. His name was General Booth, William Booth, and his wife, Catherine. And he preached a sermon one time, and I'm going to, I just took, the, took it down. He said one day that we're going to have a government without God. Does that sound familiar today? He said another thing, there'll be less, less preaching on hell. Now, I believe in hell. You believe in hell? Amen. I do. It's a literal burning place right now. A lot of preachers won't preach on it. A lot of Christians won't talk about it. They don't want to talk about something like that. And a sinner sure doesn't want to hear it, but he needs to hear it, him or her. And you know, Jesus, when John, when John the Baptist came preaching, he came preaching repentance. When Jesus came preaching, he, one of the first things he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is a hand. That means what? Do 180 degrees the other way. You repent in your heart and in your mind. And how we need repentance in America today and in our churches. Amen. And another subject he preached on, or another point, was salvation without regeneration. How many people have we saw in our lifetime, my brethren, that came to the altar and they said they repented, but we've never saw them again? I'm like Dean Hall, the FBI, the FBI couldn't find them, I don't believe. And the thing that really disturbs me within my heart is I visit with people and used to visit with people and talk with people. And they said, yes, I've been saved. But their life does not prove to the fact that they're born again washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Because I believe with all my heart and soul when you've met Jesus, you're going to be in the church house every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Whenever it meets, you'll be there if you can. Am I wrong or right? You'll be there. Because of the love of Jesus, the tug of the Holy Spirit wants you to be there. There'll be a form of religion. A form of religion without the power of God. My grandmother told me one time, she said, Bud, that little white church up there in the mountains in North Carolina, it was stacked up on rocks or built up on rocks, rock pill and all that. And my wife told me one time they would get to singing and shouting and amening in that room and she and just a one little room is still standing there. She said, I was scared. I thought it was going to fall off the pillars. The Holy Ghost got a hold of people, folks. We need the Holy Ghost in our churches today and in the power, His power in the lives of people. Amen. Now, I'm just me. I'm 80 years old, so I can be just me. Right, Brother Hopkins? We can just be us. We've earned it. But there's going to be a time, and already is, when there's Christianity without Christ. You believe that? Amen. Christianity without Christ. I've never saw in all my born days so many people living together. Uh-oh. Living together. Well, that's my, just, that's my fiance. Is that what they say? I've never saw so many people that's drinking drunks and goes to the bars and they just got a form of alcoholism. Taken away from their families. I know we live through it. I don't care to talk about us. We live through it. I know what alcohol can do to your body. I know what it does to a family. I know the food it takes off the table. I know what it does. We saw it with our own eyes, hadn't we, Brother Ken? I saw the fights in the families because of it and almost divorces because of it. And that's another thing that God hates. Divorce. 
I'm telling you, I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit is wanting me to say. Amen. He hates it. When we say I, our I do's, that's forever. You think, it's, you think me and my wife had it easy for 58 years? If you've had it easy and you've lived on Pearl Street, I want to know how you've done it. Okay? But God blesses those that come together anyhow. I'm telling you that. He's so good to us. Love. Did you ever read the book of Leviticus? I was reading in there one day in the 18th chapter. I said, whoa, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm going to go back to the front. And I started reading. I got to them big old names and stuff. And I just, you know, a bunch of preachers. It's like that fellow said up at the pastor's conference one time. I couldn't pronounce them. And you probably couldn't. If you'd had Greek, Hebrew, you probably could do it. But it got over the end of the 18th chapter and I seemed like it was like verses 1 through 12 was all on incest. God said, I'm taking you into the land of Canaan. And he said, I'm showing you these things, what they do, that the land is going to vomit them out because of these things. Amen. Now you need to go home and read it. Amen. Then I got into the 19th chapter. And he told the children of Israel, he said, if you do what they do, the land will vomit you out. Did it not? Amen. They did it. Amen. God hates incest. And God hates immorality in the church. And He hates it, period. God is so good to us. The word holy and sacrifice... It's mentioned some 152 times in the book of Leviticus alone, not let alone all the way into Malachi. I beseech you therefore, brethren, that you present your bodies, what? A living sacrifice. Holy. We're to be a holy people before God. Acceptable unto God, which is your, what? Reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. That's what happened to the children of Israel. They got conformed. In the land of Canaan. First of all, they didn't drive everybody out. Like God told them to do. Joshua died. Another generation come up that didn't know God. They didn't know Him. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I think of this church and the struggles it had in the beginning that, uh, that I was told of. And how Brother Hopkins and other pastors led this congregation right back there in that one little room. A little classrooms. And had them long seats that they were talking about. And it would be full. A lot of people. But a lot of them has gone on to be with the Lord. And we decided we needed another building. See, this is just a church house. It's a meeting house. The church is a body of Christ. Amen. That's the church. Amen. And the word to be a holy people unto God. We're to be set apart from this world. And we wonder why the world is going to hell in a handbag. Maybe it's because God's people ain't holy. Maybe they ain't living like they're supposed to be living. Amen. I know Christians that have committed adultery. I'm telling you, and then go to church, act like nothing ever happened. God have mercy upon them. They wonder about the church. I've had people tell me, why go to that church down there? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. There's a, a reckoning day sometime. You will hear a lot about accounting. We, everyone's going to give an account before God. I'll find in Faye's Bible notes where she took down notes where I preached. Everywhere I preached at Scott, she wrote it down. She wanted that. And sometimes I'll get on my knees and she'll be a crying and, and, and I, if there's any hatred in my heart, so help me Lord, I hate Alzheimer's. Amen. I hate it. Amen. And God knows I hate it. 
And she'd be crying, and I don't know what she's crying about. And I'd get down on my knees and take her by the hand. I said, honey, let me pray with you. The power of prayer, and it won't be but a minute or two. She, her eyes will just dry up. I say, God, dry her eyes up. Clear her mind. Give her a right mind, O oh Lord. Give her peace on her heart. That's what God does. And I've asked so many times, my brethren, I said, God, why don't you heal her? You ever ask God to do that? Just heal her. But there's a purpose and a reason for all of this. Let me tell you something. My daughter Patty told me, and it blew me away. She said, Dad, I said, I want you to think of this. She said, if Mama hadn't have come down with Alzheimer's, you would never have got to meet all these people that had come into the, your house, and you couldn't have witnessed to them and told them about Jesus if she hadn't had Alzheimer's. And I said, God, thank you for Alzheimer's. I want to witness to these people, but I still don't like it. I never thought nothing like that. The power of prayer. We're to be a holy people set apart from this old world. Set apart. Amen. And I want to tell you something else. God is good to us. Amen. He's good to us. I don't know what I would do without my Lord and my Savior. I'm telling you. I see his love. I say, God, I want to see your love. I see his love through these people and through you. That's where I see God's love. God, in his suffering love in heaven, sent his son to die on Calvary's cross for your sins and my sins. In Matthew's gospel, gospel 27 or 28 over here, they said that they that passed by while he was hanging on that cross, they that passed by wagged their heads and reviling him. And they were saying unto him, If you're the Son of God, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. He couldn't come down. If he had came down, you and I wouldn't be here. Amen. By the determinated counsel of God in heaven, he sent his Son, let me tell you something, out of love. Because he loved us. And Jesus said, To this end was I born. From the moment that he left heaven to the time that he was born to the Virgin Mary till the time on the cross, he knew what he had to do for a sinner like me and for a sinner like you. We're sinners saved by God's grace. You may be here today and you've never received Christ as your Lord and Savior. You need to ask Him to come into your heart because you don't know the moment you step out that door it may be the last time that you've ever been in a church house Amen. with God's people, with God's Holy Spirit. This end was I, to this end was I born and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. And every one of the every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. And Pilate said, What is truth? What is truth? Well, I want to tell you something, brethren. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man come to the Father but by me. Amen. No man. The only person that's going to be in heaven, those that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, first, I believe it's in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 or 4 or 5, but washed us from our sins, and the brothers were singing about it, washed in the blood. He's the only way. We got missionaries around the world preaching the gospel. He said, go there for them, preach them, and teach them, and guide them. That's what we're to do here at home. I don't know about you, but this little congregation has been gathered for 35 years through its struggles, and God has blessed it. He's blessed it. He gave me the honor of being here for a while, Brother Hopkins for a while, other pastors for a while, and there's going to be others. Now we have a wonderful pastor here, and I love him dearly. I'm going to tell you, folks. I love Brother Scott. He gets into the Word. There's power in the Word. Power. I could tell you a lot of things. 
but I, I want to cut it short. God loves you here today, and I want to give an invitation. You might be here today, and you may be lost. I want to tell you something. Hell is a real place. I don't want to go to hell. That's why Jesus came, to save us from that place. He, come, he came to save us from going to hell. Hell is made for the devil and his angels that rebelled in heaven. He didn't make it for me and you. He made it for them. But people persist on following their perilous ways and following him. God won't stop you. If you won't do that, he, he won't stop you. But he said, if you, he said, if you're not doing it, he said, I can help you. I can help you. God can help you today. Amen. And one of the best places to be right here, this, this altar. I hear this preacher say one time, I don't know it, I don't know who told me this. He said there's a man had a church one time, said they had, listen to this, they had singing for a half hour. I love your songs. Had singing for a half hour. Then he had preaching for a half hour. And then he had the altar call praying at the altar for a half hour. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? I don't know if I could pray for half an hour. I think I could think for enough names to pray for, you know. He said it's a growing church. There's power in prayer. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen what God does with they. There's somebody you love enough to pray for them. And you don't want them to go to hell. You need to pray for them. I've always said this. That as long as you're praying for somebody, God's going to keep them. He'll give them that chance. I don't want to see nobody go to hell, folks. I don't want to see nobody go to hell. You know, I'll be standing there fixing a face breakfast of the morning, and that hot grease will flop out on my belly and or on a T-shirt. It's hot. I think of hell sometimes. It's a terrible place. But Jesus died on that cross so you wouldn't have to go. Amen. Would you accept him as your Savior today? He's asking you, would you come? And give your life to Christ. I'm going to ask Brother Scott to come and give an invitation. I tell you what, our brother's told us about truth, and he's told it in love. Now it's up to you. What will you do with that? God knows your situation. God knows where you're at here today. God knows where your family is at here today. This is your opportunity. As Bud said, I'd be tickled to death if we was on this altar for 30 minutes, okay? You know who else would be tickled to death? The Lord above. Because you put the preeminence on Him. You, you got humble. I, I said it just a few weeks ago. There's not one time I know of that when a man or a woman got humble in the Bible that God didn't incline His ear. Let me tell you what. You fall on your face today, God will hear you. He'll hear you. But you got to ask. You understand? you got to ask. He's not just going to do it. He, you got to ask. And you got to come. Now's your opportunity, church. I hope you're enjoying the sermons here and have subscribed to my channel on YouTube. But I would love even more to meet with you in person at the church where I'm blessed to pastor at in White Pine, Tennessee, Omega Baptist Church.